Lawyers of Reddit, at what point, when working for a defendant, did you realize, my client is a monster? A lot of years ago, I used to work as a solicitor's representative. Cases go to Crown Court, barrister deals and I'm there for paperwork, additional stuff with client etc. 70 something year old man had been in jail for 15 years for an assault on a child. Solicitor and barrister working on getting him released due to him getting clean reports from just about everyone. Guards took him out of jail to a dentist, and as he entered the waiting room he saw two children, and ran straight at them. Guards stopped him. Three weeks later at court I was the one that sat him down in a room to explain that no, this isn't a hearing to release you. It is so you can be committed to a mental health secure facility for the rest of your life. He didn't take that well, I shed no tears. Not the client, but my managing partner. The client was a senile 90 year old man. He wanted to sell land worth a little less than a billion dollars to some businessmen. Suffice to say there were many who wanted to take advantage of the situation. One such person, to my dismay, was our managing partner. The partner wanted to insert a provision that would have effectively funneled about 60% of the proceeds solely to him. You could see how his eyes gleamed at the mere mention of money. The provision got lost in the revisions. I was doing the revisions. I'm no longer part of that scummy firm. My general psychology professor worked for the state of Arkansas assessing criminals to see if they would qualify as criminally insane. He told us a story one time about a guy who would get glass shards and hide them underneath his skin presumably to use at a more opportune time. He said his interview with the guy made the hairs on the back of his neck stand on end. I'm on the other side, but I've got a defendant who went to prison for starving three adopted children to the point that they needed weeks of hospitalization, then got out of prison and married a guy with children so that she could start starving them too. Listening to her interview, where she attempts to justify what she did to both sets of kids disturbed me more than any of the murder cases I've worked on. We had a client try and enforce a post-employment restraint against a 19-year-old receptionist after she quit and started working for a competitor. The reason? He wanted to make her life hell because she wouldn't sleep with him, a creepy 57-year-old man. Him trying to sleep with her was the reason she quit. Unsurprisingly he didn't take our advice to discontinue his claim and so we ended up sending him elsewhere. I listened to a 911 call where the victim's throat was slit while on the call by our client. I will never forget her gurgling and sounding like she was dying. Somehow she ultimately lived through this, saying, he killed me, he killed me. She tried to sell her baby. I found out during a hearing in front of the judge. Oh, I can share a good story. I had a teacher in high school who was a former lawyer. We always asked him why, gave up his practice to start teaching. He finally caved and explained that his last case was the defense of three people. Apparently there had been a fourth. It was two couples, who in the act of a drunken, drugged out orgy, decided to kill, partially eat, and dismember one of the women. I guess it seemed like a good idea at the time. As a lawyer, he said it was pretty open and shut, but he had to get his clients the best result possible, and he was exposed to all the horrid details, the pictures, and their reasoning. My teacher had such a far off look when he explained it, that we could see it really got to him. I'll go ahead and say it. When I practiced family law and criminal defense, I trusted and believed my criminal defense clients 100x more than my divorce slash custody clients. The worst monsters are the people who manipulate minor children for custody reasons. Them. Luckily I'm out of that area of law, hopefully for good. My mom is a lawyer. This is the story about how she quit being a public defender. When you are a public defender you don't get to choose your cases. She got assigned a young man who, with the help of his chief friend, had gotten a kitten from a free to a good home ad in the paper. They then brought it home and gave it to their dog as a chew toy. I think they also filmed it. So yeah. She said she needed a shower after every meeting with him. Cancelled her PD contract after the case concluded. Had a divorce client, husband, and father, who disowned his autistic son, tried to argue that he should get all of his wife's retirement having not worked for 12 years, 
contacted me during the height of Hurricane Sandy, he was in the Bronx and me in Manhattan, saying he wanted to hold his wife in contempt for not paying him that day, while the storm slammed New York City, told me I was making a huge mistake getting married, my wedding date was November 3rd, 4 days after Sandy, saying that I was going to be miserable and regret it, I could go on. But, the worst was when, several months later, since his divorce was taking a long time, he sent death threat letters to myself and my wife saying that he had hired an executor to kill the two of us if his divorce wasn't finalized in 60 days. Called the police and they said he left his premises one day earlier. I heard nothing from him until February 2014 when he emailed me saying he needed a winter coat from his wife and could I help get it for him. Ironically, the divorce didn't have to be completed because he killed himself before the judge signed the judgment of divorce. Too long, didn't read, miserable guy who wanted to spread his misery and cross the line when he threatened to kill my wife. Edit, for something a little lighter, this Memorial Day weekend reminds me of not my worst client, but definitely my dumbest. I was representing her on a child custody and child support matter. She was calling me on Memorial Day, saying she really needed to speak to me. I called her back and asked if it was urgent, since it was Memorial Day and all. She said, oh, I didn't think that you celebrated Memorial Day, so I thought you were going to be available. I had a client who was accused of domestic violence. Essentially he threw his girlfriend out of a second story window. Now he's got a terrible history, but so do a lot of my clients and his attitude is a little entitled, also typical. But he also knows the deal and wants a plea deal. So I'm not really prepared when he absolutely refuses the no jail offer from the state. Keep in mind there were like 5 witnesses. Why? Because they wanted him to pay for her medical bills. Okay, and whole but, whatever not the worst. What it it was his counter offer. I ain't paying that bills. Tell them I'll pay for the window. Prosecutor was not happy. The first week I started at my current criminal defense firm, I was tasked with cataloging discovery from our client's phone. The phone had multiple, talking around 4000, videos, photos, text exchanges with women under 16, though not all of the girls ages were confirmed most, if not all, were under the legal age of consent and many were barely pubescent, naked and being prostituted over one year. He would lure these girls in exchange for drugs. Nothing felt totally bizarre, until I came across one video, where he was clearly forcing himself upon a literal child, who was so high on benzodiazepines, not willingly but rather forced, and choking her in the process. When our firm confronted him, he said he was in love with her and that's why he did it. He would also take these girls to hotels and make them have sex with one another while he taped, but nothing beat what I said above. Pretty horrifying stuff for my first week on the job. When this person, an executive, said she was firing any employee who had a serious illness or injury, while promoting fundraisers at a local church for cancer sufferers, no less, in part because employees thinking she'd be sympathetic, would reveal their confidential health info to her. Criminal defense lawyer. I can name a few instances where I was just absolutely disgusted with my client. Caveat, these are mostly years ago when I was taking just any old case. I most practice white collar and federal now. 1. I won a DUI case because the government messed up on something right before trial was to begin. My client gives me a hug and completely reeks of alcohol. He has driven to court. I took his keys and called his mother. 2. Client who was accused of molesting a 12 year old. He was mid 40s at the time and I had to shut him down real quick when he tried to tell me how the 12 year old was coming on to him. 3. I represented a woman for a grand theft charge. Left her in my office to get some things copied before she left. After she left, I realized my sunglasses and car keys were stolen. I tracked her down in the lobby and told her I was not going to represent her anymore and I would call the police if she didn't empty her pockets in front of me and give me my things. 4. I had a client who was released after 25 years in prison for murder and then the same day he beats up his prospective new landlord. He ended up getting another 10 years. He was unrepentant and laughed about how he hit the guy so hard his eyeball popped out. I thought, this guy deserves to be in prison. 
took the case to trial anyway, and, shocker, lost and he got 10, the maximum. 5. Client who pretended to be a doctor, so he could sell steroids. According to the gov, he had numerous clients who were made to believe that his steroids would cure their cancer. They paid him hundreds of thousands of dollars and some of them died. I just thought that was pure evil. My SO's mother, L, was abusive. She frequently hit her husband, was a compulsive liar, and just generally made her family miserable. When they were settling the divorce, the judge initially deemed a testimony from the kids, my SO and her brother, unnecessary, probably because they were minors at the time, and testifying against one of their parents would be hard on them, to say the least. However, the lawyer representing L was really insistent that they testify. Well it must have been a shock to the lawyer, to suddenly have two more witnesses with dozens of accounts of driving under the influence, domestic violence, etc etc. We figured Elle must have lied to her lawyer about some significant details, because they were completely caught off guard and more than a little angry after the testimony. We like to believe it helped, solidify some of the criminal charges placed against her. It was a nice bit of karma after years and years of gaslighting and false rumors that her own lies got her caught. When I had to go to the US attorney's office to view the evidence in his case, there they were, the hundreds of images of child porn he had traded, the close-up images of his baby's genitals that he had taken and sent around the internet, the pictures of his neighbor's daughters playing in their kiddie pool, realized he just could not help himself. But he also never once claimed responsibility or showed remorse, so I don't feel too badly for him. Don't read this, unless you have a strong stomach. Attorney's wife here. I used to help him file away evidence and reports. Came across a file with video. Curiosity got the better of me, especially when husband told me not to watch it. File gives this story. Woman was at boyfriend's trailer out in the middle of nowhere. Got off at boyfriend. So smacked him in the head with a metal bat, and went on her merry way home. Boyfriend is apparently not a pleasant person and nobody really misses him, or looks for him. He is fired from work in absentia. On day 7 boyfriend's neighbor finally stops by, hears horse screaming and calls police. That's where the video came from. Day 7. One of the cops was wearing a camera on his uniform. It shows him, and his partner going through the house, finding dog all over the floor. Boyfriend's two Rottweilers, who were also in the house, went without food for about 6 days, before they started eating bits and pieces of him. The camera shows the moment the cop found the body on its side, rolled it over, and he's blinking. Eyes open, with most of his face gone. The woman didn't even bother, to let the damn dogs out before she left. I do not help file cases anymore. Oh man, I'm always late, when I have a good one. Not a defendant, but a divorce. Client is a late 30s woman, two kids, idyllic suburban life with her, incredibly lucrative medical profession husband. He caught her cheating. He wanted to patch things up. She decided on a divorce. So far, nothing out of the ordinary, unfortunately. Then I start getting the details. He caught her on his birthday, in their bed, while the kids were downstairs. Jude decided to come home early as a surprise, and his wife was getting kept down by a 19 year old. But wait. There's more. Really fun stuff from the husband. Guy had been treated for gonorrhea twice, and both times he had caught it from his wife. The second kid wasn't his, it was obvious, because the child was 100%, some race, and the dad was, not that race. Bad stuff, right? Well, enter the texts, emails, etc. She was carrying on like a dozen affairs at any given time. Spanning years. She would bring them home, and tell the kids they were electricians, plumbers, etc. She'd other guys within minutes of dropping her kids off at school. I've met some awful people in my time, but this woman straight up told me how much this guy loved her, and how she manipulated the out of him. He knew about a lot of the stuff, and each time he found something new he just tried to win her back. I don't want to go into the details of what happened, but some money that you get you don't really want, 